So today we're going to be covering how to use ebooks. Um, if you're in the library catalog, the easiest way to tell if you're looking at a book or an ebook is to look at this column on the left. Regular books will have just this regular book icon. Ebooks will have that little red circle. The other way is under location. You'll see a floor in the library if it's a physical book. If it's an ebook, though, it will stay right there that it's an ebook, and you need to look for the URL. That URL is under this website link right here, so I'm going to go ahead and click that. At KCC, we use two different platforms to host our ebooks, so um, the same way you might access an ebook on your Kindle Reader or on a Nook, something like that. Um, we have two platforms ourselves. These are EBSCO and JSTOR. This one that we're looking at right now is going to be an EBSCO ebook, and I can tell that just because we're on the EBSCO databases. Uh, as you're using the databases, they start to get a little bit more familiar and you know what they look like. To use an EBSCO ebook, you either want to look for that PDF full text or the EPUB full text. PDF full text allows you to read right away. This is the one I tend to go for. It's pretty much the most easy to use. Download can be helpful if you aren't going to be online for long. You just want to know what section you can download. Different books will have different limitations on how much you can download at once. So I'm just going to show the PDF view first. So it will load this page. You'll have some information about the book in this top left corner. So the title, author, um, most of the publication information. And then you'll also have your permissions here. So like I mentioned before, different books will have different limitations on how much you can download or print at a time. Uh, this particular book has a 60 page limitation. So you're just looking for that publisher permissions heading and you'll sometimes see 100 pages. Sometimes you'll see, you know, two chapters, anything like that. That's what you want to do. Um, if you see zero copies available, but you are loaded into it, that means that you currently have the available copy. Most of our books are single use only. So while you have this window open, it's acting like you have this book checked out. Um, so you can imagine like it's not currently in the library because you have it. So just make sure that once you're done reading a book, you close out of it so your fellow students uh, can also access this book. In this left column, you also see the table of contents. So usually you'll have the big sections of the book here. You can jump to a particular one or even down to the index. That's where you'll find all of the terms used in the book. That can be helpful, um, helping you find exactly what page you're looking for. But you can also search within the text. So let's say I was reading this book and I want to look at parents. I can search within. That's that option right there. I'm going to type in parents. And it will now show me every page where that term appears. Sometimes it will also show me um, the chapters. So you'll get this view where it will list all the different sections and it will tell you how many times that term appears. Or you can search by relevancy and it will give you every single page and you can jump to right to that section. So this look works very similarly to the index, but not all books have an index. So this can be a very useful feature in that case. You have a lot of similar features to what you have with articles as well. Those are all along the top of the page. So if you're in an EBSCO ebook and are signed into EBSCO, um, you can add this book to your folder and access it later. Just keep in mind that if you aren't signed in, this folder really doesn't do anything because you don't have an account to save a folder to. You can also save e email and print pages. Um, let's say I wanted to download, uh, this would be in a PDF format. I could do the current page and specify how many pages I wanted after that. Just keeping in mind that you can't go beyond the limit and it will give you that reminder right there of how many pages you are able to get. There's also a quick way to just get that current section. So if it was that chapter and the chapter was less than your limit, you could just print off chapter five, for example. And if you wanna just be able to come back to this page later, make sure you get this permalink. Um, if you copy and paste this link at the top, that isn't going to work later, but the permalink always will. There's also a citation tool right here, so you could find APA, MLA, or Chicago, whichever one you are using. Just keep in mind that because this is automatically generated, these can make some small mistakes. Sometimes things will be capitalized that shouldn't be. Sometimes things will be italicized that shouldn't be. So just leave yourself a minute to take a look at it. Again, you can export the same amount of pages to Google Drive, to another way to share. You can email it to yourself. So you have lots of options. Um, just, again, keep in mind that page limitation. That's kind of the main thing with these ESCO ebooks. And in order to download, you do have to be signed in. You can do that by clicking sign in at the top. And if you don't have an account, it doesn't take very long to set one up. You can create 
you know, you can tie it to your Google account, you can just create an account. So those are the main tips to using EBSCO eBooks. Now I'm going to find a JSTOR eBook to show you. From the catalog, EBSCO and JSTOR eBooks look identical. You won't really know until you get into the eBook that it's on a different platform. So this is an example of what a JSTOR eBook will look like. Because it's different, some students worry that they aren't seeing the full text right away, so maybe they haven't found the correct thing. Again, JSTOR just formats their page a little bit differently, so I'm just going to show you how to do all those same features as before. So the page it takes you to, again, has that publication information. It has the permalink right here, so this is the link that you would want to copy to come back to right away. Um, you can read a detailed description of the book right here. You can cite the item, again, right away. It brings up APA, MLA, and Chicago for you. Again, same as with EBSCO, these can make some mistakes, so just take a look at this if you are using it. To actually read the book, as you scroll down, you'll see kind of that similar table of contents that we had on the left in the EBSCO ebook. Um, you just want to click a section, and it does give you these little summaries. You can just start as the first one. Um, again, you can read online, download PDF, or save just this chapter. So it has a similar function. You can just do it a chapter at a time from here. Um, so let's say I want to start reading part two. So in order to read through this, you should see arrows on the right and the left. And as you click those, that's how you go through the different pages. You can't scroll through them like with EBSCO. You have to navigate. Um, once in a while, I've seen that these arrows don't load, but you will still see the gray bars. You can still click at the left and right to move through the pages, even if that isn't showing up. And again, from here, you can download, save, you can share it to these different formats. You can cite this item. And now that ta whole table of contents is on the left, so you could jump to a different section. If this wasn't what you wanted, you could jump to the end. Index. You don't have that same ability to search through the entire text in JSTOR, so that is one drawback, but hopefully using things like an index or looking at this table of contents will give you a pretty good idea of what sections you want to be checking out. So again, you have almost all of those same features available. Um, you just have to get used to it. The main changes are the way you navigate through the text. You have to click these buttons. You can't scroll through. And you do have to click one of those sections to actually get into the text to start with. So those seem to be the main things that confuse students about JSTOR. So hopefully knowing that, it's a little bit easier for you. And if you have any other questions about using eBooks, something we didn't cover, or something you'd like explained maybe in a different way, you can always come into the library, call us. You can find our contact information on our website, or there is a 24-7 chat service always available to you on the bottom left. Just type your question in this box here. Thank you for watching and hopefully this helped you.